Okay, I've got a, I've got a less technical question for you. <laughs> I've got a question that's not so technical. I'm going to be easy on you. Are women equal to men? I'm going to make an easier question. Are women equal to men? Depends on what you're looking at. Or where you are. What does that mean? I'm standing right here. If I stand, I'm not sure what you're saying, but I, I'll give you some grace on that. But the question is, are women equal to men? I'm going to make it easier for you. Are women equal to men? Who thinks that they are? Are women equal to men? I got two. Two say yeah. I say no. I, I say they're not. Because God made man first. Are you an evolutionist? If you don't know, you don't understand evolution, but yet you claim that there's no God. It's one or the other. It's not both. It's either, either God created or evolution created. It's not both. Which one do you believe? You say go. You say go to school. I'm, I'm asking you. You tell me. But here's the reason I say that women are not equal to men. Here's the reason. It's because the the Bible says God says that He made man first. He made man first, and then He saw that it was not good that a man should be alone. And so the Bible says he caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he took a rib out of the man and made the woman. That's why I say that the woman is not equal to the man because God made the man first. That's the reason. And the second reason is it wasn't the man that was deceived but the woman, she was deceived, being in transgression. And so God said, he told to the woman, because you've done this, your desire is going to be unto your husband all the days of your life. Now, you can't change that. That's something that's been decreed on you by God. And that's in all the women. Their desire is to their husband. And the Bible says for the man to love his wife as Christ loved the church. So it's not that the man doesn't love his wife. No, he does and he's supposed to love her enough that he would lay his life down. Now you want to get a man that loves you enough to lay your life, lay his life down for you? If you want to get that, then you need to be a God-fearing woman. You want to have a meaningful marriage. You need to uh, become a God-fearing woman. If you want to have a meaningful marriage, that's what you need to do. Now, uh, a, a third reason that I would say that women are not equal to men is you can go into the Old Testament of the Bible and you do not see You don't see any woman king over the nation of Israel, except for one, Athaliah. She murdered her own grandsons so that she could be queen. She wanted to be queen so much, king, she wanted to be king so much that she murdered her own grandchildren, her grandsons, so that she could be. But God worked something on her. She didn't like to get. She didn't like her outcome. But there's all the kings, with that one exception, in over the nation of Israel. They were all men. No women. No women. Now, in the books of the Old Testament, there are a lot of prophets. But not one of those prophets has a book named after her. All of
of them were men. Jonah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Micah, Zechariah, Habakkuk. All of those prophets were men. That's another reason why I say that women are not equal to men. And you need to stop saying that you are. You need to face the truth and you will be blessed by it. God says those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. So if you want to, if you're hungry for something, love, you're hungry for that, then you're going to be filled because God is love. But if you're hungry for uh, authority, the Bible, the Bible speaks of that. If you're hungry for lusting after pleasure and after power, you're going to be unfulfilled. God's not going to fill you with His love and with His contentment. You're not going to have that. So you need to choose which do you want. You want a happy, meaningful marriage or do you want a divorce? Okay, the fourth reason why I say that women are not equal to men, here's the fourth reason. Now, so far you say, that's Old Testament, that's antiquated, you need to get modern. Okay, I'm going to get modern with you. Here's the New Testament, let's see what the New Testament says about men and women. Are women equal to men? Let's see what the Bible says in the New Testament. In the New Testament. Now, people say the liberals, the liberals, the liberals say that Jesus was the great emancipator of women. And I wouldn't disagree with that. But he didn't turn the thing upside down, topsy-turvy. No. Now, if Jesus had wanted to convey the message that women were equal to men, if that's what Jesus wanted to convey, he could have easily done it by choosing six women disciples and six men disciples. And that would have made it clear that that God, Jesus, considers women equal to men. So but instead of... Case? You're saying that's not the case at all? Instead of being six to six, he, why did Jesus choose nine men disciples and only three women disciples? Why? Yep. That's an interesting point. Why didn't he make it 50-50 instead of 75-25? Why? But unfortunately, as you well know, it's not even 25-75. It's 100%, 0%. He didn't choose one woman disciple. You're going to attract a lot of smart people with that message. Now, if Jesus, I know that, and I'm going to attract some dumb ones too. That's what I want. Those are the ones I'm wanting to attract. The ones that, that have become deceived by the Democrat Party and the liberal left. Now the Bible The Bible says the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Now we want to have eternal life, but we think we've got a long time before that's going to be coming onto the table. So we now, if I knew I was going to die tomorrow, I would be very concerned about making sure that I'm right with God. But it's because that I think the judgment is a long way away, I'll go ahead and do mischievous things that I wouldn't do if I knew the judgment was going to be tomorrow. I wouldn't be doing that.
It's not going to be hilarious though when I stand in front of God. And it's not going to be hilarious when you stand in front of God. It's going to be the most sober. All the thoughts of deceiving is going to be out of your head forever. You're not going to have any more thought of trying to be clever or trying to deceive. And same for me. Same for me. I'm not looking forward to the judgment day. I'm not looking forward to it. Because I know it's going to be a terror. I'm not looking forward to that. It's going to be a terror. But we're, we're talking about are women equal to men? Now, the, the fifth reason I'm going to say is in the Bible, in the Bible, they also, they chose some deacons, the first choice, the first church, they chose seven deacons. God told them, choose you out seven. And how many of those were women? You know the answer? Zero, zero, zero women were chosen to be one of the seven uh, deacons. Now, now here's another thing. Now the Muslims have some things wrong, but they've got some things right. The, the Muslims, all the women they wear, on, what's that called? They wear on their head. What is that called? Did you know that that's what the Bible says to do? Did you know that? That's what the Bible says. Now, it doesn't say they got to wear it all the time. The Bible doesn't say a woman has to wear a high job all the time. But it says, it says when, the Bible says, when she's required, when she's expected to have her head. She's prophesying, she should have her head up. So the Muslims have something right. They've got something right. But the most important thing, they don't have right. They think that Jesus was just an ordinary man, a prophet, a good man. They think that. But they don't think he's the Son of God. esteemed him not. Who's that talking about? Well, it's talking about Jesus. Everybody looks like Jesus, including the Muslims. And I would say, and reject him. He's a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and they hide their faith But Jesus said, he said that uh, uh, no man comes to the Father but by me. I'm just saying what the truth is. Stating the truth is not a judge. Listen, what does the judge do? In court, what does he do? He is a judgment. He says, 40 days in the jail and a thousand dollar fine. That's my judgment, he says. I'm not making a judgment. I'm just telling you what the truth is. Are women should wait based on their religion? No, I'm not. I'm telling you what God said. God said for a woman that having her uh, is praying or prophesying. Now in America, they used to do that. Did you know that? They used to do that. All the women in America, when they went to church, they had a Did you know that? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. No, I didn't say that. Because God said to do it. 
also says, I don't suffer a woman to take or usurp the part of the man. What does it matter? I, I, I see a woman get up in front of the stage and she preaches to everybody. Can somebody not get saved when that woman's preaching? Maybe they can. Maybe they can. But God, listen, God put the reason is because God wrote it in there. He knows that He's got an order to things. He wants the women to be submissive, not to be the head. You know that? Did you know what the Bible listen, here's what God says about marriage. You want a good marriage? I know that. Listen, here's the here's the rule of good marriage. Wives, submit yourself to your own submit. Well, you're not going to have a marriage. I will. No, you're going to have a divorce. But, but this is God's plan. This is God's plan. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. No. Was Jesus, was Jesus married? Was Jesus married? Was Paul married? Paul said... Okay, okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you want a marriage that's not going to end in divorce, if you want a marriage where you're going to have a husband that loves you, then you've got to be what God wants you to be. Now, if you're a renegade and a rebel, you know what rebellion is like? Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Now, if you're a rebellious person and you're going to be a wife, you're going to be a rebel wife, you're not going to have a God-blessed marriage. You're fooling yourself. You're not going to have a marriage. And a man that loves you, you need to go God's way. I've never been a murderer. I don't have to murder somebody to realize that that's not good for me. I've never been a sodomite. I don't have to realize that sodomite is depraved and uh, an abomination. I don't have to do it before I realize that don't do it. I just take God's Word, what God's Word says, and I believe it and I save myself all of those problems. Now, if you want to have a meaningful marriage, you need to do it God's way. He says, wives, submit yourselves. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands in everything. For the husband is head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church and the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their own husbands in everything. That's God's plan. And now, here's the man's part. I used to think it was 50-50, and I like that. I like the idea of 50-50. Right? No, it's not. Uh, but I, I wanted it to be that way. When I first read it, I was grieved. I said, oh, no. I wanted it to be 50-50, so I wouldn't have that all that responsibility to be the, the head, the leader. So I didn't want it. I didn't want that. But I said this. I said, okay, I'm going to align my thinking up to what God says, whether I like it or not. And that's what you need to do. That's what you, 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 all of y'all, you need to line your life up with what God says. Not on what you feel like. I changed my thinking, my feelings to line up with God. And that's, I have a question. I have a question. It says Well, yoga pants is not good. I'm not saying it's a sin. I'm not saying it's a sin. But if you're if you're causing somebody to lust after you, it's gonna hinder. It's gonna hinder. Yeah. yeah. 
that's gonna cause that's gonna cause somebody to be attracted to you on that basis. I wear this because I want a male to show me attention. That's why I have this on right now. That's my guess, yeah. You think okay, wait, wait. Do you think this is justification for sexual assault? I think it I think it attributes to it, yeah. Oh my god. Wow. So, I, so it's okay. It's that's okay. silly to think it does it. That's that. silly to think there's no connection to that. You're being so, silly. So you wanna be equal to men. But you don't want to take responsibility. I think men need to learn how to behave. Okay, women, okay. I think men need to show self-control. I think that's what they need to do. I agree. Okay. I agree. Oh, my God. I have a problem. All right, I got to go back to work. My last question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, I agree. Okay, though, how does the Bible tell us to okay? communicate truth? Just love how does it say speak With love. With love. With love. Preacher. Now look, see, 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 one, see. love, love one, so here, one. Okay, listen, here's the other side of the coin. Here's the man's part. That's what I wanted to know. That's why I memorized that. That's why I memorized that passage. Because I wanted to make it part of me. It wasn't in me, but I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be. So I memorized that passage. Now here's the man's part. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it as the Lord the church. Therefore, so let the men love their wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So that's my part. I'm supposed to love my wife, even if she doesn't submit to me, I'm supposed to love her enough that I would die for her. Now, if she if she doesn't submit, I've still got to do that part. And if you happen to marry a husband who is just not showing you any love, you're still supposed to submit to him. Now, unless he, yeah. Pretty much right? Yeah. Yeah. You want to hold this time because it's kind of flying over. Well, uh, you know what we you do is just better probably just put him like this. Yeah. And then maybe put, put this on the uh, step on it. Okay, in a moment, I'm going to give y'all a chance to tell me. Look, you see that? You see that black and white, black draw in there? I'm going to, I'm going to give you the opportunity to tell me what that is in a moment. But Brother Allen... Uh, he is, he is going to answer some of your questions. Maybe about the shine. He's going to answer some of your questions. Right. Any kind of corporation in God, we got to have a standards. The Bible is very, even though we have some stuff, some skirts. I'm married. I'm married.
married God, to, a, a to a woman. Yeah, I I'm not married to a man. I'm married to a You're woman. Okay, just just throw it in out there. Was it her, See, was it her the Bible says male and female. And let's talk about clothing for a second. Do you think that you're wearing modestly according to the Bible? I don't care. I feel you like don't I look care. Beautiful. Meaning you're yeah. wrong. You you don't care about what the Bible says. I feel like you don't I care what about standards says. I love how I look. There's gotta be a standard. I love how I look. Okay? You love what you look, but you say, did Jesus Christ approve what you look? Yes. I don't know. You, love me for you me. think the way you he dress is modest? Me. You think uh, walking on the beach with the bikinis is modest? No! What the fuck See, you God is a parallel. You know what a parallel means? A you cover yourself. Okay? You cover your skin. You ladies, God made yourself beautiful for your husband's eye only. You know that? You got curves, you got bust, you got ovary, you got all those kinds of things. For you to be attracted to a male, not to be attracted to a, to, to, to a female. So, look, whether, whether you like it or not, it's not make any, any difference. God set up a standard, and you're going to give an account to God by the way you dress. You're not going to give an account, and the Bible says today, if you accept the time, you have to repent of your sin, meaning you have to change your mind about it. You have to change your mind of the way you dress. You have to change your mind all the words that comes out of your mouth. What do you want me to you gotta, well, ask the Lord Jesus Christ, are you a Christian? He's not answer. He's not there. Are you a Christian? Do you go to church? Yeah, I'm Catholic. I go to church, I go to church all the time. Your pastor. No, 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 my pastor's seen me on Why your pastor is wrong? Because I'm reading your pastor's Bible right now. I have a King James Bible in my hand. The Bible says that women adorn oh, themselves with modest apparel. Modest. And you think not this is the way you dress? No, you're not. So you gotta get right with God. Everybody here, you need to get right with God. If I have seen in my life, I need to get right with Leviticus, God too. Leviticus said they're going to help for okay, your well, house. Leviticus says you're not allowed to wear mixed fabrics. Well, those, those oh, words that you mentioned is for Jewish people. Yeah, 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 you can't be a Jew. I'm not Jew. You're picking and choosing. I'm not Jew. I'm not under the law, the Bible says. I am under grace. I am under grace. I'm under the blood of Christ. I'm in the New Testament. Those mixed fabrics. You're mixed fabrics. Those clams. You know, and all those guys you are laws, it's only for Jewish people. You eat I, look, if I'm going to follow the Old Testament, there's 300 laws, lady. I cannot follow all those things. That's why we're not under the law. So don't pick and choose about the clothing. We're not under the law. We're under You're grace. You're telling us to pick and choose clothing. Hypocrite. So, look, you need to get right with God. The truth of the matter is, folks, you know what? why we're here today? Because hellfire, hellfire awaits for each and every one. Hellfire is awaits at the end of your life. You know, every three seconds right now, people are like going to hell. Every three seconds. One one thousand. One one thousand. One one thousand. Someone has done with a million population. Stupor, 
Hellfire awaits you, and I'm loving warning you. I got drunk last weekend, and where am I going? Where am I going? You're violating what God said about your body. And your I'm body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Because I'm going to destroy your body. God is going to destroy you. He's going to destroy me. Yes, because I wore a bikini. If you guys leave, yes, are you getting drunk? So here's the loving thing that we do. Judgment is coming. Don't even think that we have hate. We don't have hate. If we know that there is hell, if you know that you can go to heaven, if we can tell you how to go to heaven, that is the loving thing that you can hear today. But you love your sin, and you laugh, and you laugh about the preaching. You know, they get serious about the preaching. You know why? Hell, fire, I wait for all of you. I'm going to heaven when I die. My brother over here is going to heaven when I die. Are you going to heaven when you die? Are you sure? If you don't know, you're headed for hell. This is the loving thing that we could tell you that if you don't know when you die, if you don't know for sure where you're going to spend eternity, you headed for hell. If you're watching pornography, you headed for hell. If you wear if you're smoking pot, you're you headed for hell. <laughs> yeah, you are full of lust and your masturbation. Hell yeah. You're getting drunk every Friday night like that, this girl over here. Like this girl? Like me, okay. And you know who awaits you when you are in your tipsy and you're getting drunk? Who? Who's yeah. My friend. A pervert person, you're getting close to get raped. No, just because That's you get drunk does not mean you're going All to get raped. Boys, if you get raped, you're going to hell. All if those boys rape, are going to a bar. If you rape, you go to hell. They are waiting for a girl to get drunk so they can take a diamond from your body. A lot of ladies get raped. Because of alcohol. A lot of ladies get raped because of the way they dress. No, they get raped because of fucking bags like you. You ask the police. You ask the police. Hey, when you get raped, right you know what they say? They say they do not the police, just because they dress in my The police will ask you rape, why you get raped. What is the clothes you're wearing? That's the first thing they're gonna ask you. If you got raped, when you get drunk, oh. the police will ask you. What are the clothes you're wearing? Well, I'm showing my booty. They're right there. I'm showing my booty with my yeah. yoga pants. I'm showing my booty with my bikinis. That's why I got raped. You don't get raped See? That's for the facts. Ask the police department. They're I'm not right lying there. to you. Ask them. He just said that if I'm wearing so yoga pants, I will not get raped, sir. God is going to judge you, okay, either at the end of your life or at the present day, the way you live. Bro, I'm wearing yoga pants. It could be your cousin that's gonna rape you. I'm it could be your relatives that's gonna rape you. That's full of incest, and that's a sin too, my you dude. You see? I'm incest wearing yoga is pants. Sin. Yeah, and you're preaching and it. And that's why the Muslim men and some of the Amis got, got it right. That you have to cover yourself with modest apparel. Because men love to see what they see in your body. That's a natural instinct. A fat roll? And you let it show to the world. You let it show to the world your body. And you think you're godly. And you think you go to church. You're violating that God said your protection. I am not violating You're uncovering anything, of your protection. Sir, I am wearing All yoga these boys, pants and I am wearing a crop top hoodie from Victoria's Secret. All these Secret, boys and I am not that watch this pornography. What I am wearing, sir. All these boys that watch this pornography. And they look at you and they lust well, after you. you. Let it, here we go. Here we go. And that's a matter of fact. And we are giving you warning. Repent. Change your mind the way you dress. Change your mind about your religion. Jesus Christ can set you free. Are they going to hell? Jesus Christ can set you free. Jesus Christ can get you to heaven. Come over here. If you're addicted to alcohol, you're headed for hell. If you're addicted to pot, marijuana, you are headed for hell. And this is the loving thing. If I believe that there's a real hell, I do believe because the Bible says there is hell. This is my loving effort for you today to tell you, escape from hell. Do not go to hell. And everything that leads you to hell, I will stop doing it. I will go to Christ. I will get born again. I will confess my sin to God. I will repent of my sin. But you, lady, 
And you boys, Why are you coming at you're me? not preparing you for your eternity. You're not preparing for your eternity. You're preparing for something that is temporal. Yes, you go to college, you get a degree, you get a good job, you raise a family, you reach 40 years old, you got a good house, and you reach 60, and you reach 70, and then what? Hellfire is the end of that. What is the point of living when hell, when you, all your effort, when all your energy is gonna burn up in hell? What is the purpose of going to college when you're gonna end up in hell? Why you're so passionate? Because hell is real. Because hell is real. If that building is burning in a fire inferno, and there's a lot of students in the building, I will tell them, get out of that building. They're gonna burn forever and ever. So I'll tell them, get out. Get out from the building. Come to Christ. Get born again. Repent of your sin. Instead of playing with sin with alcohol. Instead of playing with sin with, with, uh, with cigarettes. Playing with sin with vaping. Playing with sin that there is no God. Playing with sin of immorality. Having sex with your boyfriend outside of marriage. And this is the preaching that you're not going to hear in a lot of churches in Charlotte. This is the kind of preaching that you were never going to hear in, a, in American Baptist churches. Can I read it? All they want you is your money. All they, a lot of pastors, they want your attendance. They want your money. They don't want to tell you about hell. They don't want to tell you how to escape hell. But they want to say, well, come to church. Give your tithes and your offerings. You know, we need you to come to the church. But they will not tell you how to get out of hell. They will not tell you how to escape the judgment of hell. Are you going to heaven? I, I'm going to heaven. Are you? How do you know? Are you? Because I know Christ and I repent it on myself. Uh, you're wearing okay. I confess my sins all the time, bro. I'm Catholic. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I do my shit. Hold on, hold on. 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 Hold on, what? Oh, when is she getting ready day? for the judgment day? What, it, what does that have to do with it? Hey, ask her. What does that have to do with it? She's getting ready for the judgment day. Do you, do you play sports? Ask her. Do you play sports? Ask her. Do you play sports? Hey, ask me. Hey, ask me. Hey, ask me. Are you getting? Are you? Are you getting ready? Heck yeah. Well, you're not ready, but they will. Last night you get drunk. Are you getting ready last night? You see? You're not getting ready last night. You're getting close to heaven when you die tomorrow. What the heck? Exactly. Okay, hold up. Hold up. Hey, boy. Hey, I'm just answering your question. You just said that I'm not getting ready for heaven for wearing yoga pants You should prepare for the judgment day. Hey, I don't hate you. This is the living thing that I'm trying to tell you that you need to prepare for the judgment day. He you, said I'm going you guys, to a lot of boys are listening to rock and roll music. You know, all your heavy metal music that talks about rape. All the heavy metal music, rock and roll, that talks about immorality and drugs and addiction and hating all the people. See, by the way, when you, you, you listen to the rock and roll, to prepare for the personal day. This may be your last day. The Bible says that your life is like a vapor that appears for a little time and passes away. You know how short is your life?
like this compared to eternity? Like elevation? Yeah. It's, it's less than zero. And you're wasting your life in sin. You're wasting your life like there is no God. Yes. Start reading your Bible. And start praying. Because you're headed for your judgment day. Well, well, brother, I've been experiencing a judgment day in life. You're getting close to a judgment day. And a lot of you are experiencing that My temporary judgment. My pagan God judgment. says, as long as I die with the sword in my hand, I go See? to heaven. Yeah. You're getting close to a judgment day. And look at, the, look at your life. You don't know where you're going when you die. You think you have eternity waiting for you? Yes, there is. But where are you going to go? Hell, hell or, or heaven? You think we're telling you a lie? You think we're telling you a lie? If I'm, if I'm telling the truth that there is God and God created hell, you should be fearful about the hell fire and the judgment day. But you know why you're not fearful? Because a lot of preachers in America would not even give a chance to preach hell in your pulpit. And they hold the Bible. They wouldn't even preach about the Bible. And the Bible is They wouldn't even preach about fires. They would not even preach about drunkenness. They would not even preach about homosexuality. They wouldn't even preach about lesbianism. They wouldn't even talk about abortion. Atheists. They don't believe that there is no God. I try. You have been brainwashed and you've been paying money for you to get brainwashed. You're spending all your time, all your energy for you to be brainwashed. You need to read your Bible. You can have your Bible on your app. You can have a Bible in the library of a Piedmont Central Piedmont Library. You better get serious with the Holy God. And God hates sin. You know what sin is? It's a violation of God's law. The Bible says, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. The Bible says, thou shalt not commit an adultery. The Bible says, thou shalt not have bare false witness. The Bible says, I'm just telling you about the Ten Commandments. Just the Ten. And the Bible says, we all come short of the glory of God. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You are a sinner. You're going to face God one day.
going to be the judge of the tournament today. said it? He said, so that men would give honor to the Son in the same way they give honor to God the Father. Now, 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 now it, tell me, hey, tell me, tell me who this is talking about. Tell me who this is talking about. I'm going to, I'm going to read something. You tell me who this is talking about. It says, was despised and rejected of me, a man of sorrow, with grief, we hid as it were faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Who does that sound like? Can you tell so far? Can you tell so far? Can you tell so far? I'll give you some more hints. It says, Surely he hath borne our sorrows and carried our griefs. That one that we despise. Surely he borne our sorrows and carried our griefs, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Can you can you figure it out yet who I'm talking about? So, but, but he was he wounded for our transgressions, he bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his infinite stripes we are healed. What am I who's that talking about? And it says, Everyone to his own way, but the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, so he opened not his mouth. Who is that talking about? It's obvious that's talking about Jesus. But it wasn't the Apostle Paul who was saying that. It wasn't Peter. It was Old Testament Isaiah. Isaiah said that. Now, now the now the Muslims the Muslims say no, Jesus didn't die for any sins. He, uh, uh, only uh, uh, every man has to give his pay for his own sins. Somebody can't die for somebody else. That's what the Muslims believe. But this Isaiah said that he was he, that by his stripes we are healed. We all we like sheep have gone astray, everyone to his own way, but the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. I 
Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, right? Um, yeah, he's changed my life. And now every time I look, I remember yeah, that day. If you're getting that, how fat off I was. So yeah, I respect the problem. Yes. People don't want to hear this. Always our population. That's hard. Like, like he told me. Whether they're going to be willing to accept it, they're going to accept it. 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 Well, first of all, why you became gay? Because have you looked at a woman? They're gorgeous. I like women. I like women. They're great. All right. So is that, is that Jesus hey, Christ told you to do that? God can deliver you. Yes. God can deliver you. So why did you come up to say something? Yeah, just because I don't see the point of why y'all are standing here. I know, but what if he loves you enough to die for you? Wouldn't that? Would, would you? Would you? Would you? Would you just? Would you just neglect that? Count it as not important. Yeah, but how will you escape if it's true? If he died for you, if he died for you because he loves you, and you neglect that, and you neglect it, how will how will you escape? Stop talking to me. Who wants this? Look at that man. Why, why do you feel the need to shove your beliefs down my throat? Because that's the way God's chosen to. That's how I got saved. I heard somebody. I heard somebody preaching, and it caused me to realize that I needed to come to Christ, and I and I came to Him. But I do care about what you believe. Thank you. Thank you. I don't. I can do whatever I want. But everybody's I'm not going to choose the Lord. You. You, no, you're yeah, not equal to me. Come, here, come over here and let's see who's got a stronger arm. No, I'm not going to fucking touch you. If I do touch you, it's going to be well, such a good See this guy. Right. Wait, so see this guy. Just is. because he's stronger than me. Like, well, you're not equal to him in strength. Then. You're not equal to him in strength. Dude, I did gymnastics for 12 fucking years. I'll beat, like, I'm like i not beat. See, you're a denier of the truth, sir. No, he's not. Okay, let's let's see the experiment. You know that men are physically stronger than they're bigger, they're stronger. They're not equal. Women are not equal in size, they're not equal in strength. That doesn't mean that you are above me. That doesn't mean you're above me. Well, I didn't I didn't say above. It's not. God's a man. God's a father. Because he's causing God the Father. That's why. And it said, it, it says God the Mother Father. Earth. Where does the Bible Mother say Mother Earth. Earth? It doesn't say that. Because the Bible says the Bible says it's the Earth irrelevant. is going to be, because it's going to melt with fervent heat, it's and going to, and the heavens are going to pass away and be dissolved. The Earth is not Mother Earth. All right. So I'm no. still going with this guy, right? Okay, but look, look. Are you are you Muslim by any chance? What? Are you Muslim? You're not are you? You no, I'm not. What? So what if he was? Well, I was going to ask him something. I know a lot. You can, you can ask me. But uh, let me ask you first. So I just grew up with this guy, right? This right. Sign. That's right. And one of the lines is, Obey Jesus because he died for you. And why Jesus? If that's make me... Does that make Jesus the right guy to obey him because he yes. just died for you? Yes. There's a lot of people who died for you and for me. Name me one. Jim Jones. He didn't die, die for people. you. Yeah, he's dead. He didn't die for anybody. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you. I yeah, Jim Jones. He took all the people know, and like, like, all right, I'm going to kill James myself James. for all of y'all. <laughs> and they killed themselves for him. You so, are yeah. deceiving yourself. No. Jim Jones didn't no. die for what would, anybody. What, what would make and Jesus, even if he did, it wouldn't do any good. He was full of sin his own self. So was Who's Jesus. Who's going to save him? Yeah, but Jesus was full of sin. We're all full of sin. Yeah. Jesus says, Who, which of you convicted me of sin? What sin did he do? Um, hey, listen, no. I don't think that... No, no, I'm not saying that he was he was full of sin or anything. But I'm just asking. If anyone who has not done any sin, if someone who is a good guy and he dies for you, I think that would be my mother. Should I obey my mother? Well, it's like this. Your mother's not God. That's the good news. Yeah, Jesus is not God. Listen, God says, if the word in the 
beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father. I'll be glad I'm going to hell. Yeah, that's, uh, that's in the Bible, so right? He's, so, he's, so Jesus was God come in the form of a man. That's who He was. Now, we and have sinned against father. God. In addition to sinning against each other, we sin against God. A woman. Yeah. Right? That's who our what offense Jesus is with. Said. That's the one we've got to get connected to. We're, no. we're, because of our sin, we're separated from God. That's in, our problem. Can you see that? Can you see that that's our problem? No, because that we're separated be, from God. Yeah, God can be born. Or can be dead. Piece together from okay. other fucking God religions. can be born or can be dead. That's one of the characteristics of God. Where does I don't care. That? God can no I'm not saying God died. I'm saying the body that Jesus God was in never died. existed in the first place. No, now, no, 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 no. Jesus' spirit did not die. That's true. I'm not saying his spirit. But he was never. He was. So he's not dead. His body died. Yes. And then God raised him from the dead. Right. That happened. And even Jesus, his own self, raised people from the dead when he was on the earth. But they died again. Jesus didn't die again. Where did you come from? You came Where'd from Jesus a woman, go? right? Do you respect her mother, or do you think you're above her? Right? Yeah. Women. The Bible says that women the Bible can be can be saved through men. childbearing. So yeah, women are. Women, man is not without the woman. You're right. The Bible says man is not without the woman, but the but the man is head of the wife. Head of. <laughs> and. My only thing is, I really listen to the lie, love, and the terrible. Charlie Manson's original album sounds very similar to what you hear today. I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. But, okay, but look, look. If, if if you don't think we've sinned against God, you don't think that God told Adam, "Do not do this one thing," and He said, "He told Adam, the day that you do it, I think you're this goes both ways. Both ways. God did sins to us. God sinned to yeah. us. Yeah. Can make it real, man. I mean, seriously, you, you, you just come with snobs and you know that ain't true. You know God has to sin in the good stuff. You've got to figure out a way that you're going to get connected back to God. And you've got a limited amount of time to make that, to come to that understanding. Every one of us, we've got, you got to get connected back to God. You're not connected with Him and you've got to get connected to Him. Now, how are you going to do that? You don't see Him, how are you going to get connected with Him? have committed sin to God? What is considered to being sin or doing sin to God? What is that? Explain to me. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. That's one thing. Whatsoever, Whatsoever is, not is not of faith. Any transgression is sin. So anything that's not acted out of faith is going to be sin. That's true. Anything. So when you but shed, that's not, is that's not a complete, is it? that's not a complete definition. Okay. You, you can be doing. Yeah, I just got to You can be doing stuff that are have have some faith involved that are seen. Somebody might have faith that they can rob a bank and 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 get the money and go and get in their car and drive away. They may have faith in doing that. And so they may do it. That doesn't mean it's not sin. But anything that you do without faith, that is sin. If I if I, if I just say, well, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to go ahead and. Uh, Flip somersaults across the Jello patch, you know. What? <laughs> if, you know, if I want to do some odd thing, I don't have any faith in doing it. Then I'm, then I'm doing sin. So but, that's, but that's what the about part. the the but transgression the of the law, visceral Trans reaction of you just doing things that aren't sin. <laughs> that would be sin. Yeah. Then why would God give us that gift? Yeah, what would he give a fuck? Yeah. Why would he give us that? Why would, that, yeah, why why would that be the gift of free will? Influence? Why would people be born loving men? Free will. God, and loving God women gave us together. the ability to make a decision. He, he gave us I can make my own decision. If I want to go kiss a girl, I'm going to go kiss a girl because that was the, that was the choice well, I was that given. Well, that wouldn't be a good decision. It would be a good decision because it would be it's who sin. I love. It would be sin. No, it's who I if love. You're doing if you're basing it off of love, love does not. 
Now, if you're doing it out of out of love and there's no sexual uh, lust involved, then, then I would agree that's not sin. If you kiss your mother, that's not sin. Uh, but I had a I had a I had a man one time, and I was at a homosex parade in Charlotte, and I was talking. I'd been preaching, and I was talking to this guy, and he said to me, "It's just talking." He says, "What's the worst sin you've ever done?" He was being a friend. He was being a friend. But he was a sodomite. And I said, "Well, I said, I said it's probably when I smoke marijuana." And and he said, he said, "What well, do you think God wants to forgive you of that?" And I said, "Yes." And he said, "Well, don't you think that God wants to forgive the sodomites also, the homosexuals? Don't you think God wants to forgive them?" And I said, "Yes, He does. The problem is they don't acknowledge that there's anything wrong." Because and the Bible says, the Bible you says, love you love, if we and that's confess it. our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us for all unrighteousness. But as long as I'm saying, I've not done any sin, I cannot get forgiveness for that. I cannot. Are we talking New Testament or Old Testament? Yeah. New Testament. I said, if we confess our sins, He's faithful, Jesus is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, that means just say the same thing that God says about it. I, I'll overeat sometimes. And, and, I'll, and, and I'm so getting ready to... I'm getting, is a sin? I, oh yeah, it's a sin. Yeah. And so I, 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 I'm, I'm wanting to do it. I'm wanting to have some more than I ought to have. I'm wanting to have another second or third helping of ice cream. And I know I'm being a glutton by doing it. But I, but I say some reason why it's all right to my mind. So it's okay because, and then I'll go ahead and do the thing that I know not to do. And then I've learned, you know, just stop and confess. Just admit, don't go on trying to pretend like that you didn't sin. Just stop and admit, confess it to God. And then he'll forgive you. What? Confess the sin to God. Confess that it's wrong. But if you don't confess that it's wrong, you say, it's not wrong. It's not wrong. It's okay. God's okay with it. Yeah, what's he going to do he's, after he's you not gonna, confess? He can't what's get he, forgiveness like, for it. He can't get how forgiveness. Is, that no makes God sense. Is, how is God forgiving you for your sin going to help you? Yeah. Because, like, because like you won't that make have your, life your sin if you're on poor, you. And you're like, oh, I slept with a man. But I'm not going to do that anymore. Does that make you not poor? No. I couldn't just understand. Because God I didn't understand. You, you have to repeat it. You have to repeat it. Just because God forgave you for being a homosexual and you're poor, does that make you not poor? poor? I, I don't understand you what you're saying. You don't have money. You have to say it You have to say it You sleep slower. with a man. You don't have money, but you sleep with a man. But you stop sleeping with the man. You say, "I give God my for I I apologize to God. Whatever." Does confess. that make you not you got poor? To confess. Does that make you not you poor? Does that make you have more money? Does that make no. your life better? No, it doesn't. No. So why the fuck would, what should you even do? You that? think having money is going to make you happy? No, but like, what well, does that people happen? People really need money to survive, though. I mean, people need money to survive. People. Yeah. That's I don't how say it is you. Now. I, I didn't. The Bible said the rich man. He, he fared sumptuously every day. And, and a beggar Lazarus was laid at his gate having sores. A dog would come up and lick the sores of Lazarus. Lick his sores. And he desired to have the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. He desired just to eat the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. But the Bible says that Lazarus died and he was carried up into the bosom of Abraham. And the rich man died also, and was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, I mean, it's being a good story. in torment. Yeah. It's a beautiful story. Now, but, yeah, but yeah. It, it's a beautiful story. If you're the if you're the la if you're Lazarus, it ends up in, in Abraham's bosom. That's yeah, a beautiful dang, story. Man, I'm a, I'm but if you're the rich man, it, being in torment in these flames, I ain't, I ain't no and he says, no "Send Lazarus that he might dip his finger in some water." And, and put his finger on my tongue because I'm been tormented in these flames. And Abraham said, no, can't do that. And then, you know what the rich man said next? He said, well, listen, send Lazarus, let him go back and warn, I've got five brothers, they're headed to this same place. Tell him, tell, send Lazarus back from the dead 
that he might warn them, don't go there. And, and God said, no, if they won't hear the preachers, they're not going to hear. Even though somebody rose from the dead to warn them, they won't hear. I'll make it through 